Good evening once again. Uh, this is another episode of Grant Draws, and this week we're with Mog Park. Is that how you pronounce your name? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go through her credentials a little bit, and just to warn you guys, it's a long list. <laughs> just listen to a little, just do a little bit. <laughs> so, so Mog has worked on Game of Thrones. You worked on the comic books that they did? No, the the live action. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. what did, did you like, did you do like uh, character art or did you? Um, There was like a, a, like a post-production side where they needed an illustrator specifically to draw out all the key scenes for um, the backstories of history and lore. And you can particularly see that in, uh, I think you have to get like a Blu-ray or extra on the DVD section. So yeah, I was very lucky enough to just do all that stuff for them. Wow, cool. Okay, we'll yeah. we'll talk more about that once mm. once I get done with your intro. Mm. Um, you are a featured you're a featured artist on the Artist Alley Shopping Network on Facebook, mm. and you host a show on Sundays at six p.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, the name of the show is Sketch Up with Mog and Mel, mm-hmm. and it's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitch every Thursday. Yes, Thursday. Oh, okay. We're gonna have to check that out. Mm. I've never seen it. Oh, if you like, could we? We should have scheduled you uh, as a guest too. It's exactly like this, but mine's two hours long. Oh, really? Yeah, and we auct- actually auctioned the artwork off at the end of the day. Oh, that's neat. So, yeah. Well, okay. I have a million questions for you, but I'll finish your intro before okay. I start asking you anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Mog is also the regular artist on Snowpaw for Lone Wolf, Wolf Co- Comics. Mm hmm. Ruxy the Vampire. Is that how you pronounce it? Ruxy? I think so. Ruxy. Yeah. That's for KG Comics. Mm-hmm. And you are a cover artist on Ninja Witch, KG mm-hmm. Comics, Ethereal Comics, and you've done a lot of different variant comics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and you can also, well, we'll get into mm. the other stuff that you've done here shortly. So, okay. Mm. So, so you do a show on on Thurs on what is it Sundays? Uh, that one yeah, not as often, but Thursdays more oh, regular. Okay. Yeah. But the the show on Thursday yeah. is a drawing stream. Yeah, the one it's two hours, and you know it's called Sketch Up with Mog and Mel. So. Cool. Before we get too far along, I am going to check the chat. Carl is here. Good evening, hey. Carl. Good evening. Donna is here. Hello, Donna. And of course, Don is here. Don's picture Hi. is very cute. Is that your cat, Don? It's adorable. Yeah, I can't tell if it's if it's Don's cat or if it's like yeah. like a like a model cat or something. I know. You know what would be really creepy, Grant, is if you really close up on the cute picture, it ends up being like, you know, those onesies people wear. Those oh. Clothes. It might be that too, right? So, oh, so according to, to Don, yeah. uh, that's her cat and that's Georgia. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, uh, Don. I was, I was uh, morbid about it. It's an adorable. No, I don't think that's morbid, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but according to Don, she thinks that she is a model. Oh, I bet. I bet. Do you have kids, Grant? I have two stepkids. Mm-hmm. Does any That's of them you... think they're a model? No, I don't think any of them think that they're a model. Oh, well, my stepdaughter mm-hmm. might. She thinks that she's yeah. going to be a model or, or an actress. But Yeah. Oh, good luck. Yeah, I know. That's a hard <laughs> career. I'll show some of the art that you're working on too. Oh. I can't figure out how to do two two things at the same time. So I'm I'm well, we're gonna take turns. Mm-hmm. It's okay. So what is the the glass for? Is that like for drawing circles? This? No, yeah. it's my paint. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like to use uh on um like little vegetables. 
especially the smoothest the surface like porcelain or glass i just i don't know it just does it i can control it better for some reason oh, okay. because if i do it in plastic uh these things it beads and it doesn't really drip down so the mix when you when i mix the paint it i don't get a full control of that it's very mi minor stuff but i i'm very particular about that that's cool yeah thank well, you thank is it like considered watercolor or is it what yeah uh it's kind of like a watercolor so usually what i do is 80 percent of my work starts uh, is in watercolor and then from then on the 20 percent is whatever i feel like so it could be pencils could be markers could be oil acrylics whatever that fits that uh that look so yeah so right That's now really i'm gonna cool. really yeah especially you... because Sorry, I mean, nowadays, so much stuff is computer generated. Yeah, that's true. Especially, actually, um, yeah. Hmm? You're actually using like real, like two dimensional paint and stuff like that. Oh, but my comics in tears is just like you. Oh, really? I do. I have to. It's, it's too much work. I use a uh, clip studio. So. Oh, do you? Yeah. What about you? I use Photoshop, but I've heard clip studio is better. Yeah, it has the best. Uh, there's a feature there that is for the. Uh, oh shit, something on it. The. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Can I swear here? I'm not allowed. Yeah, you to, can right? swear. Oh, okay. I mean, Carl might be slightly offended, but the rest of us would be alright. <laughs> no, because if you're, I think monetized, then I I can't do it. I think. I'm definitely not monetized. Okay. I need to get. I would need to get like. Way more listeners before I was monetized. You will. You have a very chill voice. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I forgot my train of thought, so sorry. You were talking about um, the difference between Clip Studio and Photoshop. Oh, yes. Wow, you have a good memory. So <laughs> Clip Studio in the brushes, they have this uh, control in the setting of the brushes where it stabilizes. Oh. So you know how in Photoshop, like you have to be very careful when you draw like especially the slower the pace yeah. and then you can see kind of like this minute little dots but mm -hmm. they actually uh have a correction uh feature in there and you click that and then it just acts oh, like wow. uh, and even it even acts better than when you would draw traditionally so oh. yeah and i only recently discovered that three days ago <laughs> oh, really? pages. <sighs> so yeah so you've been you've been doing you've been using Clip Studio all this time and didn't it? Oh wow, yeah. you're even using an airbrush. Yeah, I, I want to do this airbrush in the base. I've never used an airbrush. I'm... Oh no, this is not a legit. This is like those cake decoration cheap airbrush. Uh... They're like um, portable, and you just charge it here. There's like a charge little pole. This whole well, thing is like a battery work, unit. That's yeah. the important thing, right? Yeah. Do you have an airbrush at home? I don't. Oh. I just feel like um, I'm child. I like to do different color layouts, so I like to um, like this one. You know, Wolverine has a very fierce type of look, right? But I want to do a pink face and see if I can challenge myself to make him look fierce, even with a pink face. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So, do you have a? Do you also have um? like school uh what do you call it? you went to school for art so i went to school for graphic design okay um what about you did you go to school for art yeah um traditional i think i majored in traditional illustration first it was animation oh. and then i couldn't stand just sitting in front of the computer for hours and hours in a dark room uh right. <laughs> i just said to myself one day i can't do this so I decided to switch and uh, at the time they had fine art. And the only reason why I didn't do fine art was because fine art was doing abstract weird art, but traditional yeah. illustration was the only one that was doing, uh, they were teaching everything like watercolor, acrylic, oil, pastel. And it was fine art up to the abstract art, that era. So it was like right. all master paintings and all of that, they were teaching hardcore, like how to draw, how to paint. 
So that's what I wanted. Because I thought if I can just get the fundamentals correct, I feel like when I go out to the world, I can apply it anywhere. So that's what I so do. You, do you still do illustration, like commercial illustration, other than like comic book stuff? Uh, commercial illustrations other than comic books. Well, I did like a uh, card card art. Does it count as commercial? Oh, okay. So like Main trading cards. cards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. How about yourself? Like, how did you transit from graphic to the thing? So I always wanted to be a comic book artist. Mm. And everybody told me not to do it because it's too hard to make a living doing that. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I went to school for graphic design. And I think in the back of the, my mind, the reason why I went to school for graphic design is because I knew that I could kind of um, still work on like comic book stuff like like in my free time. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're kind of related. Um, but they, once they I got really, a job, they weren't, but you found that they weren't really right. Yeah. And I also found out that graphic design wasn't as much fun as I thought it was going to be. No. Um, uh, they, everybody told me like, Oh, it's such a creative job. And it, it really isn't. <laughs> no, it's, not. it's not. No. Oh, it's but the, one thing that, that does irritate me is, um, for graphic designers, um, you get this stigma where they will say, hey, it's simple. It's easy. You just, you know, do just simple shapes and do it. It's easy. Yes, it shouldn't exactly. take you long. But it's not. It takes a long time. Exactly. Jesus. God, people don't understand that part. It's yes. So, that was what, so that's kind of why I got out of graphic design. Um, and then it was, um, it was always something that I wanted to do. And then during um, the, the quarantine, I kind of had like a lot of extra free time. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to start doing a comic book. And um, at first I tried to be like an artist for other people's comic books. Mm -hmm. And um, I talked to a bunch of different writers and I didn't like any of the stories that they were yeah. suggesting to me. So I was like, well, you know what I'll do? I'll just write my own story. Really? yeah <laughs> wow man you've never really written like a full script before right right i mean i i wrote comic books when i was a kid and i still have some of the comic books yeah but um what so how did you transition from like commercial art into like comic book art um i was lucky because my um after the, I for, I was like you, I always wanted to do comic art. That was the end, end game, end goal, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought I will just make my skill, you know, develop my skills as an illustrator because they are related if you think about it, right? Drawing, painting. Right. Yeah. And while I do that, I will, um, uh, after I get enough uh, income or whatever, I would transition into the comic world so yeah. and luckily by pure chance uh i met my husband who's who's mel so that's my sketch up mark and mel oh, okay. and he is uh he already had experience as like a studio manager and everything uh comic industry he owned like comic book stores and everything like oh, i didn't know anything about comics because uh i'm not i'm not from here I didn't grow okay. up here at all, so I don't know anything. So I'm more, I grew up more like into the manga, the manga right. world, that's the anime world, because that's what was my culture. But um, so yeah, and he, through him, he had all the connections and everything ready. So once I was done uh, with all the Game of Thrones and all the gigs, uh, he started to push me into, while I was doing Game of Thrones, he started to push me into uh, showing up in cons. Like, oh. you've done Comic Cons, right? yeah yeah so a lot of co comic cons and he was talking about this is when the whole business side of it like just like yeah i had to learn really fast or slow or whatever but it what people don't understand is you should know this by now comics it's half of it is like business right right all of it is all it's all about business 
So I didn't know anything about that. And luckily he's, uh, he's good in business and everything. So he set me up, he, he made me exposed to all these other people and the publishers started to notice me on the comic floor. And then he, they started to approach me for work. So yeah, I'm more like, don't, my case is very lucky. Like I would just literally just show up, sit, and then the clients will come to me. But, oh, okay. Yeah. So, 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 so what conventions did you go to? Uh, first, I used to live in Hawaii because my husband is Hawaii. He's from Hawaii. Oh. So in Hawaii, there were like two big uh, shows. And okay. then that's how I started. And then once we moved to uh, California, we got more aggressive and just did all kinds of different, not like the major ones, like uh, except San Diego. I only did San Diego once. It was... Um, I wasn't, I was too like claustrophobic and <laughs> you get buried there. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I liked, but we liked doing, uh, we went to Chicago, uh, WizardCon, like MegaCon, oh, okay. Florida, um, LA. Right now, the next one I'm doing is, it's going to be a San Francisco convention. Is that where yeah. you live? No, I live in LA. Where, where do you live? Uh, I live in, in Pittsburgh. Um, Pittsburgh is what state? Side. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah, way on the other side of the country. I've never been there. Uh, that's why your uh, your family was saying goodnight to you. Yeah. it Yeah, it's it's not super late here, but it's like 9 o'clock here. Yeah, you guys three hours ahead. Yeah. Yeah, my wife is not going to be on the stream tonight because she's going to bed she um my my daughter has to be up very early for school is it, so is that normal to be up really early for school for your daughter well, she's going to a trade school <gasps> which is cool what kind of trade i wish i went through trade school <laughs> i wish that i had too right um, she she's going to become a cosmetologist like a hairdresser <gasps> Oh, that makes sense that she wants to be then like a model and stuff. That's the girl, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, if you were going to trade school, what trade would you have liked to learn? That's a good question. I mean, I think about that. Um, I mean, it would have been cool to learn some of like the like computer-aided drafting stuff that they teach. But I don't That's know. Maybe. Would, yeah. What? Really? Yeah, you can learn computer-aided drafting in, in a trade school. Okay. Um, what would you have wanted to learn? Oh, man, I'm really torn. One is um, either plumbing or, oh, man, I'm so torn, Carp carpentry. Like, I want to build houses. Oh, really? Yeah. So would you would want would you have wanted to do that instead of becoming an artist, or would you have wanted to do that on in, on top of being an artist? I think it's a necessary skill that everybody should have. Like you got to fix your plumbing, or like your house is falling down, you got to know what to do. Uh, so I would like to do both if I had a chance. That's you have, know that's a good point because you know I was talking to somebody the other day, and he was saying like. You know, I was asking him, like, how he learned how to do all this stuff. Um, and he said, well, my dad taught me. And I said, well, what do you do if your dad doesn't know how to do this stuff? Um, there's nowhere to really figure out and learn this stuff unless you just want to go to trade school, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, my my dad never knew how to do any of this stuff either so he never taught me i know it really sucks it, it really sucks like calling the plumber and you see the bill like what the fudge <laughs> yeah i would like to i would like to learn how to um fix my car too just because oh so much money oh my god okay now i'm torn now it's either going to be a mechanic <laughs> Oh, oh, a cart. I think you're gonna. 
Uh, I don't know. I like plumbing. I think plumbing number one for me. You'd like to learn how to plumb. So is it, yeah. is it just the money or is it just, is no. there something about plumbing that you find interesting? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know how people feel like squeamish about, uh, oh, that's so dirty and, you know, yeah. stuff like that, right? But the feeling you get when you clean so thoroughly, like the, the dirt that no one wants to look at for like 30 years, kick dirt and shit, literally shit. Yeah. It's like the most best feeling ever. It, it's yeah. like, um, <laughs> it, cause so many people feel they get all like, oh, that's so gross, ew, right? And I think I have a very a strange personality. The more people are uh, just grossed out about it, the more I wanna just do it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I was, um, it was hard growing up as a girl, I think. I was too much of a, I wasn't, I wasn't regular like a girl. So, so yeah. So Carl has a question for you. Have you ever yes. worked with Chris, Christy Shin? Oh yeah, we're friends. She even, okay. uh, she stayed till even just the day before yesterday, she stayed over at my place because we were doing something together. Uh, we were doing a show together. But, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I know she's from California as well. She's going to be on the show too. Um, mm. I know. So are you guys like really good friends? Um, there, she's not my best friend. I'm going to be cold about that. Uh, my best friend is only like, I would say two, like within five with my hand, you know, but yeah. anybody outside of that, I just consider friend. Do you, do you know what I mean? Grant? Yeah. Do you have that? Like you, your really best friend, like you have maybe two or three, two. Right. Yeah. You have that? Yeah. I, well, I had, I had, the one guy who is my best, the, my best man at my wedding. Yeah, actually, you just need one. <laughs> True. Just literally, just need one. Yeah. The only sad thing is, if that person's gone, I don't know. We have to find another one, but uh, we don't want to. Exactly. Yeah. So I looked it up. Uh, Chrissy is going to be on my show October twenty third. Oh wow. That's one day before my sister's birthday. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I'm interested to see mm. her new comic book. Yeah. Uh, Demon Bitch, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think she did the same like like you were during COVID. She said she decided to just do a comic, and that was when Demon Bitch was born. And then she got addicted? Uh. I think she got, oh, she's like a, she's like malware. She was born to do business. So the business side came alive. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe I need to talk to her. I'm not as good at the business end of things. Uh, if you want to do business side, I actually, then you should talk to Mel. Mel is the one. Oh, your husband? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the one. He helped so many people, so many artists. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Does he charge money for that or does he? No. No, oh, really? Just be nice to him and give him like, you know, nice things. <laughs> just be really nice to him. Don't take um. What we don't like is when it, what what is that word? You give an inch and they take a mile. Right. Yeah. yeah. So if I'm gonna ask him as, for advice, mm -hmm. like um, just don't don't over over. Oh, that's fine. Like, that's fine. Oh really? No, advice is fine. Advice is fine, but when I say like take a mile, is um, they end up uh having you do it, like where you end up setting a table for them, the design, oh. the advertisements, all of that, all the work. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I can see why but, that would piss him piss him off. Mm -hmm. Cause he's a very uh generous. He likes to help people, but. Uh, he said this. He says his word, and I don't know if it's a guy thing. So maybe you can confirm with me. Um, if you expect anything from me, or you demand things from me, I'll never give it to you. So the huh. more you expect, the more you demand, the more I, I won't give it to you. So he likes doing stuff for people as long as they don't expect it. 
<laughs> no, it's it's that's the funny thing. I don't quite understand it, but I think it's more like an emotional thing, right? So you know, like how women they would just. I guess you don't know. Oh, you should know because you have at least three women in your life, right? Three nah. girls. Um, right. They're like, hey, uh, you know, they they want something from you and say, hey, you know, can you right. take this from me? Or, hey, do you love me? Do you love me? Say you love me. Stuff like that. It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so did you, uh -huh. do you do that sort of thing with him or or not? I think in the beginning, I was just like, hey, you love me, right? So. Get me that pizza, right? But uh <laughs> well, pizza isn't so bad. A pizza is only like what, like fourteen or fifteen dollars. But if you no, were but, like, no, but you have to drive tour. out to get it. Oh, <laughs> hey, I used to live in Illinois. It gets cold there in the winter. All right, would you do that? No, no. <laughs> you lived in Illinois. Is that where you met your husband? No, I met him in. Uh, I met him at a con. <laughs> Oh, I met him at oh, cool. Oh, Anaheim Anime Expo, California. Anime and or Anaheim Anime Convention. Okay. Yeah, and then San Diego after that. Yeah. So are you are you still interested in anime? Or are you more interested in like American style comic books or both? Uh, I ended up developing a happy medium in between, and cool. I don't. I call it the illustrative style. So cool. I like the bridge between. I am. So I am just starting to get into uh, not so much anime, but, but manga. I know that <gasps> oh, I'm very, this one? Um, uh, what was his name? Um, I read the comic book about the city where everything turns into spirals. I never. Yeah. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Is that like old, super gritty black and white? Yeah. Uh, is it called Blame? No. I'm going to look up the name it's of really it. really edgy I... and really depressing. And it's like a uh, super like sci-fi. It's, it's, I would call it more like horror. But um, sci-fi type of thing? Yeah, what? I, th I think the guy's last name is Ito. Jun oh, Junji Ito? Is that, does oh, that Junji. Dude, that's a classic old mask. That's old. Yeah, oh, that's really? old. Yeah. But Junji Ito, like, if you like horror, yeah. So somebody yeah. told me that, that for somebody who has never really read manga or anime, like, this is, like, a guy who I should check out. Uh, that's a very strange fucking, sorry. <laughs> very strange i would not recommend that because first of really? all this is, this is what i would ask uh what kind of story do you want to tell uh i mean i like what all different have? types of stories but um i like what are you working on i like um i like fantasy fantasy right yeah action? Was... lots of action in the scenes i'm sorry lots of action in the scenes like yeah choreograph fight fighting yeah okay Yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, then no, Junji is is the wrong guy. Sorry. Okay. Who do you that's recognize? Horror. There's so I many. Uh, you said fantasy, like Western fantasy, right? You're talking like medieval. Yeah. Like guys with swords, like fighting. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, Berserk. Like uh, Berserk. Berserk. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah, so my my stepson really likes that comic book. So, but, uh, but you feel the sickness when you when you read it. The uh, the artist, you feel his. Um, I think he suffered from a mental something, so you can oh, feel really? it. Yeah, because it's hyper detailed, like suffocatingly so. Hmm. Hmm. So, what is your what is your favorite? Oh, uh, if it's if it's that genre within yours, mm -hmm. uh, claymore. Claymore. Yeah, literally, the the main character uses a claymore, so that's why it's called claymore. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, claymore manga. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm looking up this stuff in Wikipedia as you as you mention it. 
Uh, the so it says it here Claymore is a Japanese dark fantasy manga knit, written by Norohiro Nor Yagi, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it debuted in Shonen Manga Magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's four chapter monthly publication. That's one of the things that amazes me about manga. Like, I don't know how they put out these. I'll tell you these. why. I'll tell you what, the secret. It's not a secret. They have a production team. Right. Mm. So all you have to do as a, if you're the creator, so uh, you would just do like almost like this line and then you give it to the next assistant and the next assistant does all the rendering and cleanup. And the next assistant will put all the toning and the next assistant will put all the backgrounds. There's a separate like delicate, it's like a production uh, factory line. So you can uh, turn it out super fast. So is that, is, is, is that, oh, by the way, I think, I think you're, is this your husband? Oh yeah, there it is. Short circuit. Yeah. Hi Mel. So, um, He's saying so hi to you. We talked, yeah. we talked a little bit, your wife and I. I might come on your, your show and I might sure. I might Sorry, be just... messaging you asking you for business advice. Uh Mel, did you hear that? He's talking to you. Well, anyways, yeah. um, we can we can talk about that yeah. later, but um I'm sorry, what were we talking about before? Uh, we were talking about how you don't understand how they can churn out four chapters right. in such a short period of time. And then I was telling you the secret was actually they have uh, several people working on it all at once. So so what is it? Like one person would do like like the background? Yeah, and there's one... a yeah. Okay. background artist. The number one, if they have to like, they can't pay anybody. The one, one, one person you want to ever keep out of all is always the background artist. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. But I just found out recently, some people think like the American way of doing comic books where it's like a different person, one person pencils it, a different person inks it, and then a different person colors it, and then a different person letters it. Yeah. Some people think that that's really strange in and of itself. But, um, I don't know. I guess I grew up on it, so it doesn't seem strange to me. I think it's very similar to the manga structure, right? You have yeah. this, but it's a it's more broken up. So you Yeah. Usually these guys are all it's all in house, literally. So they congregate to the artist uh the main guys. So if you're the penciler, then they go to your house and then they oh. just sit next to each other and as soon as you turn the page in. You just do it. And you know how it is? The moment you are in a group and you're all going for the same goal, you end up being more productive and very fast because you, you know that guy's waiting on you. Literally, he's sitting next to you. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. That would be nice, right? Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's interesting because it, it's funny. Like, in America, like, everything is, like, you email people back and forth. Yeah. It's so very distant. Times, sorry? <laughs> Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was just saying, like a lot of these, um, a lot of these artists and writers, they've worked for years and years together, and and they may have never even like met e each other. Yeah. Yeah. That that is, that is kind of good if you are the type who don't want to get bothered by anybody. I think. But yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I think that that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um. Like apparently, I, I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they did this before, like the invention of the internet, though, because I mean I've heard stories about like artists had to like, you know, wrap up their their art in like, you know, in like a FedEx container and mail mm. it to you know Marvel or DC, and I would be like so scared to put like yeah. my art in Me too in an envelope like that. Uh, you're okay. For me, I would I'll be more just just scared that I'm not making it in time for the post right. office close, and then and it's like please, please let it go through. Like, yeah. 
But I mean, that's that's really fascinating because, like, I mean, if you, I have no idea how that would work because, like, okay, you would have like, okay, you get a you get done with a page, mm. then you have to mail it to your anchor. Yes. Then your anchor oh. has to ink it. Then they have to mail it. Mail it. To yes. The colorist. Jesus Christ! This sounds like a lot of work. I know. That's a lot of downtime, especially if you're doing, if you're doing um, yeah. a monthly comic book. I think that's why some of the comic artists, I think Rob Liefeld, I think I heard, okay. did an in-house because he was like, I couldn't be bothered. Uh, so he kind of like rented a studio space, and then everybody has to be there, and then. So supposedly, I'm not. I could be completely wrong and shooting off my hip, but I think I have heard something like that. But who knows? That would have been more f efficient for me. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, what was one of the? What was one of the first? Well, what was one of the first comic books that drew you to the medium? Um, I'm curious, both both Japanese and American. Uh, for comic books, when I came over here to America, I was a college student. Okay. So, um, when I was studying art, they touched on uh, comics because when you study uh, history of art illustration, U.S. U.S. Uh, illustrations, mm -hmm. it does go into the comic, and that's what I really was interested in anyway. Mm -hmm. And my first intro was, I think. Ah, uh, Bernie Wrightson. Oh, Bernie Wrightson is yeah. great. It was so good. It was, it was a beyond like mass. It was master, and I thought this is even possible. So in my eyes, like if I have to do a grading, uh, the artwork for manga would be like level B, and then comic would be level A, where it's like they put more detail, more like it's more realistic. It's just so much work put in. Whereas manga, it's all about time efficiency, churning yeah. it out. It's story, it's story heavy, so they have to stylize it simply as possible so they can churn it out. A comic, it was more like to me when I looked at it, it's like, oh my God, everything has to be almost anatomically correct and there's gotta be perspective and everything. And that was insane for me, like, wow. that's. But then now the comic has changed a lot from when I first saw it, so I don't know. In what way has it changed? I can see a lot more influence of like the cartoon, the anime influence. So there's yes. a lot more simplification. Like the, I would say the masters of comic is maybe up to the early 2000s. Okay. But yeah, and everybody else after that, it's very like heavily, they're stylizing it, they're simplifying it and all of that. But, yeah. See, now this is what I, I find find interesting. I, this, that, that's not what I expected you to say. I, I mean, I don't know. It's, Maybe this is just my perspective, but um, it seems to me like like things are moving towards like manga being yeah. more more popular, mm -hmm. um, mm. especially when I talk to like younger people. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, and and that's kind of part of the reason why I wanted to start reading manga because yeah. I wanted to see what is it. That these young people are relating to, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I guess I guess I'm surprised that I'm wondering if part of the I'm I'm surprised that you found American art to be better than yeah. Japanese, yeah. Um, because I mean, all I hear from young people is like, uh, "We don't like American comic books. We only like manga." Mm. And um, I don't know. It's I'm wondering if part of the reason why you like American-made comic books better is because you didn't grow up with it. No, I don't know. It, it could be that, but uh, I think here's a distinction, and I can point out. I think you're really getting hitting the vein there, but I can clarify for you. Mm -hmm. I didn't say I like the story. Right. So. When it comes to art history, European comic, uh, American comic, art history, skill wise, the best. Mm -hmm. So, the yeah, best European kind of comic. Really. Do you, do you like, like Mobius? 
oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but the reason why you know why manga is so popular, and I was still I was still go for manga anime. Do you, you know what it is? It's the storytelling. Okay. That's why people are loving it. It's not the style. And this is what I think the US comic industry, the big two are kind of getting it wrong, is they think if I just copy the style, that they will get more readers. It's not the style. It's the story. It's how you tell the story. It's the content. So we copy all the superficial little things yeah. about anime. Like, like we give our characters big eyes or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, Donna is, Donna is making fun of me. She said, these young people. I'm saying, like, it's funny. When, when I go to these conventions now, it's very rare that I see people under the tw age of 25 cosplaying as, like, Spider-Man or or Captain America yeah. or, or Superman. People mm -hmm. under the age of 25 are, like, all they want to talk about is anime yeah. or, or manga. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's very interesting. It's, I mean, it's frustrating for me because they look at my comic book and they're like, oh, this isn't manga. But um, I, I haven't seen your comic book, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, yeah. Are, what are your influence then for comic that my you want to you want to put in your comic book? Um, what kind of style. You mean art, artist, artist wise or, or writer wise? Uh, let's start with both, but let's start with art. Um, I, so my favorite, not only my favorite comic book artist, but my favorite artist of all time is a guy by the name of, of Bill Sienkiewicz. Oh, yeah. The guy's so good. Um, mm. I don't know if I would say that he's an influence on me, though. I think he's, I, th I feel like you can't even be, like, I wouldn't even, like, try to be influenced by him. Like, he's just, like so above everybody else um i don't know i mean i i feel like like my my answers are are cliche but it's i mean i like i like mike mignola oh yeah mike mignola it's nice. like yeah i like frank miller mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. jack kirby oh like classic that. yeah yeah mm. so that's the that's the art style yeah, that you might want to go. Yeah, and again, but again, though, I don't know if those are people that I necessarily copy when I'm I'm drawing. I don't know if I like really think like that though. Mm. I kind of just draw when it comes out. I don't know. Yeah. So now, about how about story? Now, that's let's go to that. You, the story. You mean the story of my comic book? Mm, that you would like to that you kind of want that uh, feel like the the writer in the, you said because you remember we say we are, I asked you what do you want to put in like the influences and you oh said, you mean as far as art. writers yeah um so I'm a, I'm a very big Grant Morrison fan okay um, I have to be careful I always forget to call Grant Morrison them um but yeah, they they are one of my favorite writers, and um, the stuff he did. Uh, or, I'm sorry, oh god, I'm so bad at that. The stuff they did with um, Superman. Superman is my favorite character, and so oh. and, Grant, and Grant Morrison is my favorite writer. So the fact that Grant Morrison wrote Superman, that's like my favorite thing. Um, okay. And he did a lot of comic books. Ugh, God, I'm so bad at that. They did a lot of comic books with Frank Quietly, too, who I'm a really big fan of. Um, I don't know. Do you like Frank Quietly's art? I I actually don't recognize any of the writer's name. Oh, okay. So, sorry, yeah. Um, and then the other, the other writer, I mean, again, I, I really like Frank Miller. Yeah. Um, who I think is like not only a really good artist, but he's also a really good writer. Um, I haven't really liked any of the stuff 
Frank Miller's done recently, though. Hmm. Within Frank Miller, then, which art, which story? Well, you... when I was a kid, my favorite comic book was The Dark Knight Returns. The Dark Knight Returns, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really like the stuff Frank Miller did on Batman. Mm, um, yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, let's see what Carl says. Yeah, so, Carl. I've had other writers influence me, but I don't try to copy them. The work sits in my head more like a template or something. Yeah. Sometimes someone will be a negative influence. Mm. You don't want. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So I'm not sure what you mean by a negative influence. Do you mean like when you look at somebody's art and or somebody's writing and you say to yourself, um, you know, I want to do the opposite of that? Yeah, I think so. What not to do type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I love those things where you see the like art or you see the work so bad, you learn a <laughs> lot more. <laughs> I love it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Carl. Yeah. So Carl goes into more detail. Uh, I that happens for to me when I'm um, when I'm reading like independent comic books. Um, <clears throat> one of my big pet, pet peeves is when is when you see the art and the writing and the writing is just describing what the art is already oh showing. Oh my God. That's my biggest pet peeve. I fucking hate it. There. Yeah. Like that's like, that's so freaking. Un well, okay. So it's most so dumb, most independent comic books, if I could give any independent writers, <laughs> one word of advice is cut the amount of text. Oh in my your God. Comic book, like in half. Cause like when, when I open up a comic book and like all I, and I see like a third oh of the God. page is like word balloons. No. Fuck. Like I just want to set the comic book down and, and not read it. I just don't read it. I just, it's like, um, you get hot and bothered and you think this chick is going to be so hot. And then, yeah, it just goes down. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's probably my biggest pet peeve, especially oh. with like independent comic book creators. Um, I, I thought they wouldn't do that because that's why they're independent. They want it to be cool and different, you know. But that's yeah. so interesting. Like I experienced the same thing with all these uh, independent writers that I ended up uh, meeting. It's mm -hmm. like a they're so prose heavy. They have to put in the text. Yeah. Like, they're literally describing uh, the very thing you're seeing. In a yeah, dialogue. exactly. It's like, why? Why did somebody teach you that you have to write for dummies? Like, um, I think for writing, you do have to write for dummies. So Mel is saying that's because the writer wants to convey the story through the words and not allow the art to. T I I've thought about that. Like, is it part of like the fact that like the writers are like jealous of? of the artist and they they want to they want to have like complete control over the comic book. I don't know. Maybe subconsciously that is, but I don't want to think that people are that petty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want I refuse. You should at least have some rationality when when you operate. So maybe it's not like like pettiness, maybe it's it's like they don't feel like they're contributing as much as the artist. Ah. People, like add more words. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You know what? What you just described makes so much more sense. Grant, you're like a mind reader. Thank you. Is that what you were thinking? No, as in maybe you understand them like that. You're not reading my mind, but I think uh, you understand their intent. Also, maybe you're not a mind reader, but you're more like an intent reader. <laughs> right. So you know regarding writers so how did you meet you know the the different writers that you that you've worked with uh just through a con 
Uh, okay, they, that's right. Yeah. Three conventions. Yeah. So now, do you now do they usually let you have pretty much a lot of control? No. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. They tell yeah. you mm -hmm. like this panel is going to be mm -hmm. this, 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 and this. Yeah. I I think at the end of the day, I think you and I might be similar in this way where we just want to work well together. Right. So even though I have all these uh, opinions and something, after I uh, hang out with you and I know how you are and you want to be controlled and you want to be tight about it, then it's no use pushing it. So I just let them be. That's the best thing you can do. So. So if the writer has an idea and you think, oh, this could be so much better, mm -hmm. you kind of just let the writer have his way? Uh, or her way? No, at least I'll give it a shot. Right. But after, say, 10 pages of it, and I see that their true uh, their uh, feelings are coming out, right? then I realize, but most of the time, I would say it's so bizarre. 10 out of 10, you have to end up adhering to exactly what they want. Right. So, yeah, I have I have rarely seen any writers, oh, except professional. Like when I was working in the big commercial world, then it's a different mm -hmm. story. Uh, ego, what's that? You got to put it out, you know, put it aside. But in, especially independent uh, writers, yeah, it's their baby. It's, it's their right. soul. So you don't want to tamper with it, I realized. So, so it's yeah. kind of like an issue where it's like, okay, if you think, okay, this could be better if we did it like this, you might bring it up. But if they say no, you just yeah, like Yeah, I give up. But I do try. Yeah. I do try and then I give up. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean about commercial art too, because I think that was kind of what was frustrating me about doing it is um, it feels more like it's about ego then who has the best idea? Mm, no, I think I, I'm sorry. I meant the opposite. Oh, really? Yeah. So I thought like the bigger the company, like Hollywood, you know, HBO, um, you would have more ego clashing, more blah, 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 all of that. Mm -hmm. no. no. Oh, really? Yeah. That's because think about it. And I realized I was thinking why. And then uh, when I was listening to one of the panels by, do you know uh, the famous um writer sci-fi writer called orson scott card yes so he i was listening to his end credit for ender's game and this was after the movie was made okay and he actually had the same thought like me like oh the more the bigger the company i work for it's gonna be like like you know a lot of cocky ego people comparing dicks kind of like very harsh environment right and and he said he found out that it was the opposite which was like my experience because he found that, oh, they get rid of people like that. If you, It's not even about how good you are at talent. They want that too. But if they find out that you can't work with everybody else because of your ego, they get rid of you. Oh. Because everything at the end is about production. It's a mass production. Everything has to run smoothly. So the best people, the best like great people to work with, uh, you find them in a higher and higher end type of a uh, environment like uh nickelodeon like disney you know like oh. even like bigger production companies because they want at the end of the day they want to be able to work with you they want to be able to communicate with you and if you keep saying no 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 and you're you're an ass they just get rid of you at the end like that because wow. co cohesion is so much more important and that's when i learned uh teamwork and cohesion from them that's fascinating. I would Isn't not have guessed yeah. that. Though. Yeah, it's fascinating, right? But I don't know. I don't know your commercial background. So I would like to hear about that, the ego. Well, I guess I was working for smaller companies. Um, and one of the things was, you know, a lot of times I would be working like directly with the CEO. Mm. And I think like CEOs are kind of used to, you know, people just telling them, them yes you know yeah and um you know regardless of whether or not they're they're good at coming up with ideas they think that their ideas are always the best but um <laughs> wow Jesus. yeah i don't know i don't have like experience working like yeah. for like hbo or 
like Coca-Cola or yeah. you know, really big companies like that, though. So. Yeah. You know that word? Um, I think the mil Mel says it because he has a military background. Uh, stay in your lane. Was it an uh, area of expertise? Not your area um, of control, whatever. Okay. Something like that. So in, in that big world, they know. So I'm good at CEO, like managing and making money. But art, I don't know. So that's why they have a different department. So they right. have to trust the artist. They trust the direction. So, respect. yeah. So there, there's a lot of respect even within, within, within. So if I hire you for your art, you better damn well, I trust you to do it and present that. Right. And if you tell me that, you know, I'm, I'm not an artist and you're telling me this is it, I trust you. And I think that's why some of these production companies, that's why they're, they're successful because there's no weird Mike, uh, guy at the back who's suddenly from a, uh, managing like accounting area coming in and say, Hey, you should do it this when he has no expertise at all in that area. Right. So, right. Know. Right. Yeah. And so, so you've had like pretty, pretty good experiences with all of the writers that you've worked with. Uh, I think independent writers is where it's a bit, uh, there's a lot of quirkiness I have to iron out. But uh, commercial, like big commercial ones, no, never had a issue. So, so now what do you mean by like quirkiness? Like if you, like if you had the issue where like maybe like a writer wasn't explaining a, a page very well? Uh, actually, that leads me to a good question I want to ask you later on. So I shelve that. But um, I meant more like mm, kind of like what we discussed before, where we can visually see that this is not going to work out as well. So we have a better visual uh, answer to the problem. Right. But uh, as a writer, they refuse to take that into consideration. So they just want their own stamp, literally. They just want their own soul to breathe. So uh, you just have to be just the hand. Right. And some people like that, actually, because they don't want to think. Right. Yeah, so that leads to this question, like, when I give you a script and it's very vague, like, hey, let's just say, this is page 13, it's a fight scene, but just make sure that this character is getting pummeled, you know? Right. So that's very vague. Do you right. like it? So if I was the artist on a comic book and the writer was not being very specific, that would make me nervous because I'm worried that I'm going to draw the page in a way that they don't like. Um, but maybe... Maybe it is the an issue of maybe the writer does trust you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So which would you prefer? Would you prefer somebody who comes in and says, on this page, these two guys get into a fight mm -hmm. and then yeah. just leaves it up to you? Or would you mm -hmm. rather have it like, okay, in panel one, this guy punches yeah. the other guy. Yeah. To the other guy, kicks the guy. I I'm more like the former. So you like to have like specific directions. No, no. Oh, you like to for it to be vague. Yeah, I do okay. better in vague because I can uh, uh, come up with different ways to make it interesting. That makes sense. Yeah, but so I you... I realize people don't like it most. That's actually, I thought everybody does like that, but nobody, not not nobody, rarely I've seen that, rarely. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it's because they don't want to think. At the end of the day, a lot of people say they don't want to think, so. But I think, Grant, you're like me in a way where I feel like you're a thinker, so. I mean, that's why I like doing my own scripts, because, I mean, you know, I can just kind of, I can do what I want to. Mm -hmm. And now, have you ever thought about um, uh, writing your own comic book, or do you do you have not have any interest in that? Um, I do, I do have interest in it, but oh man, 
this is where it gets uh, bad, like structure and like having the time to do it is the number one killer of everything. So yeah, I'm just busy. Um, I think I would say making a living doing uh, commercial work. So the time yeah. is like all put into that. I mean, that's the other problem. I mean, finding the time to do it, right? Mm -hmm. How do you do it? Um, well, like I said, it, it started out because of, of quarantine. Mm. Um, and so I had like a lot of extra time on my hands. And then I started like just kind of writing the script and... Um, well, I took an idea that I had from when I was a kid, and then I kind of played around with that. I mean, do you have ideas for a comic book to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, <laughs> but the problem. Okay, I want. I'm curious because, are you? Do you feel more comfortable character building than world building? What are you? Hmm. Yeah, I guess I I think character I think the characters are more probably more fun to to write you than like the it? world, right? Okay, what about uh like plots? Are you pretty good at it? The plots? You know, you it's You know, it's funny. I never I never wrote like an outline. Yeah. For my comic book. I don't know if that's normal. I just started sitting down and and writing it kind of like as it came to me, and that's how the comic book came around. I don't know that I, there are a couple other writers in the chat. I'm curious if Donna or Carl, how they managed to do that. You mean plot? Yeah. Hmm. So, that, I, I, so getting sorry. Um, listening to what you just say, you say. It feels like when it comes to characters, not a big problem. You actually enjoy it. Yeah. You you understand their drive, your motives, their motives, everything, right? Mm hmm That's cool. I have the opposite problem. Like I love world building. So I end up getting like inanimate objects, uh system, like money system, all of that. I love it. But <laughs> characters, oh. like it's like empty shells. So yeah. So you don't like writing the characters? I thought I did. And I was writing down like one time I was like, okay, let's let's do develop a character, right? But I was just only concerned with the cosmetics. Oh, this character has gonna have this power. And then later on it's gonna be this, and this is the system, and this is blah blah blah. But nothing about the the meat of it, like the soul of it. So your characters had cool like powers and cool yeah, outfits. So or, or even background history and stuff like that, right? right? But the actual soul, the emotion, is it, nothing. It's like hollow. It's like, wow, I just this sucks. And I realize some people are really good at it. It's all about the characters. And I admire people like that. So, so Donna says, I am a total pants, sir. I think what she means is she likes to, to fly by the seat of her pants. Mm. Um, she says, I write several different scenes around an idea and then I figure out how to place them together. Okay. I like that. It kind of reminds me of Stephen King. That's what he says he does. There's no real structure. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I read, I read his book on writing. It yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you read it too? Oh yeah. On writing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Carl says it depends on the project for me. Sometimes I have a general plot idea and ideas about scenes, and then I just tie them together. Mm. And Carl says he's more interested in the characters and the interaction. He is not as interested in the world. Yeah. Mm. But, um, you know, small details are extremely important, I find out. Right. Because uh, can I give you one example? This mm -hmm. is very detailed. So if I went about like Carl, uh, mm -hmm. then I would probably make, make these kind of mistakes. So one, 
there's this character that has a sword. He carries an axe, okay? But mm -hmm. check it out. In the whole design and everything, that they uh, never, there's, uh, there's no scabbard. It just magically materialize and magically goes. So sometimes like th little things like that, you do have to really consider. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So are you, so is that something that like, if you were reading a comic book and you're like, wait a minute, this guy's got a sword, but he doesn't have. Yeah. How did it appear? That would drive me nuts. What's going on? Is this, what is what is this? Where the heck is it? Where? Right. I mean, let's be kind of realistic here, man. <laughs> right. But, yeah. That reminds me, I need to go through my comic book and make sure <laughs> my character has his, his scabbard. Really? You Are you serious? I mean? Are you serious? You have that? You have a character who carries a sword? I have a character who carries a sword. So if he doesn't have a scabbard, then I'm going to be in trouble, right? Yeah, you will. Uh, another thing is, even if they have a scabbard, what do they do with it? There's another thing I noticed. So people have these scenes where uh, they, this is a scabbard and this is a sword, and they go, it's coming out, right? Right. But the scabbard doesn't disappear. You got to put it away. Right. <laughs> what the heck? Exactly. Yeah. It's like, Come on, man. And uh, I, the reason why I like uh, samurai Japanese uh, when I see manga and I read the samurai stories, they they use the scabbard with the sword to fight, which uh, makes sense, yeah. right? That makes sense because yeah. you're kind of wielding two things: one's like kind of stick, and one's kind of like something. You kind of have to use both. But what I read about in American comics, when they have a scene like that, the scabbard is never used. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder, well, I don't know. I wonder why that is, but I, I don't know. Maybe Americans don't have as much experience with. Yeah, I, I think that's what it comes down to for me. I think it's because they just don't have experience. They don't understand what to do with it. Where in Asia we grew up, like you know, watching a lot of martial arts. It's it's like a whole kendo yeah. culture type of thing. So you can't negate that. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So let's Who's your see. favorite? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. What were you gonna ask? Oh, I'm actually curious about your character. Like, who's your favorite character amongst your character? Uh, so my favorite character is. This is probably gonna be no surprise to anybody in the chat. My favorite character is Mooney, because he's based on my cat. Is um, he the main main character? No, the main character is is Victor. Victor is, um, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's, uh, it involves reincarnation, mm. which I don't necessarily believe in, but it's yeah. just, it's fun for the story. Um, but, um, yeah, so Mooney is like a, a really powerful wizard who was reincarnated as a cat. Oh, and I, like um, I think that's why people he's I mean, he's also the most popular character in my comic book. I think part I mean, I mean, everybody loves cats, of course. Yeah, of course. But um, but I think it's also the fact that, you know, like the fact that I take him him seriously, like as a character. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, that like, means that. OK, go ahead. Sorry. Like, like the cat is not just there to be cute. Like, it, he's like a real character. Yeah. He can. He has character. He has his own persona. Everything. Exactly. Yeah. And I think Don says, "Have a great night." Good night, Don. Oh. Thank you. You're you're better at checking the the text than I am. Mm. Good night, Don. Um, that reminds me. I think there's a manga. I don't know the title, so, but later on I'll send you the title. Mm -hmm. It's a modern manga, so it's not like old. Um, it's a fantasy. Okay. And the girl, the system is interesting. Your powers, right, are mm -hmm. uh, 
determined by what zodiac sign. Oh, okay. Right? So somebody, because I actually had a thought like that, and then somebody finally used it. So depending on, say, if you're a Virgo, which, uh, well, I, I think it's interesting, but if I w lived in that world, I would have hated it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, um, so the main character is a girl who is a Virgo. So because okay. she's a, a Virgo, I think she does a healing, like a maidenly type of healing, growing kind of thing, like just nice things, nice uh, stuff. And he, she ends up uh, being with a cat who's just like your character. Okay. Uh, who is a master level uh, kitty cat, master wizard, but he was cursed to be in trapped in the body of a wizard. Oh, okay. So he wants to go back to, back to um, <laughs> being a human. Right. And they finally uh, go through this rigorous like journey to find out how to make him human. And the there's a door, there's like a book, like a huge t wall of like a, a little book, and the book speaks to you because it's a know-it-all book. And he said, "Oh, she has the power to change him back into human because she has the life force." Because she's, you know, the she says that her magic is uh, healing. She can literally bring the dead back to life. And she's powerful enough. It's like, oh, yeah, that's so cool. And then, the, so how do we do it? She can turn into, you know, she can turn me back into human now. It's like, yes, you have to do called, uh, you have to exchange breaths. Like you have to kiss, right? Oh. And so the girl's like, oh, I'm so shy. No, I can't kiss, right? But turns out she has to kiss his butthole. Oh, geez. You know, like how <laughs> those uh, butt plugs are suspend, uh, those in medical, that sometimes you, that's like the best place to put like medicine or anything. Right. Yeah. That's the most oh, effective way. <laughs> so she oh, has to goodness. blow through his butthole. <laughs> so was this, was this a comedy or was it played like straight? Um, there's comedic moments like that, okay. but it's serious too. So it's an adventure, but uh, I think you'll like it. Yeah, I'll check it out. Mm. Like I said, I'm trying to get more interested in manga and anime just to see what you know. What what is it about it that's so popular? Yeah, after you read some, please let me know. After some, because after a while, when you study, you're gonna do some pattern recognition, and you'll 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 find out like, oh, I think this is. This is the formula. Yeah. If you find that out, please let me know. So, this, yeah. Oh, I, will, I was going to say, yeah, I, I'll let you know what animes or mangas I like. I am going to try, I think I am going to read, uh, um, what is it, Barbarian or, or Barbaric? Um, because I, you're not the only person who told me that I should check that oh, out. Ber Berserk, uh, Ber Berserk. Berserker, that's it. Yeah. But that's really dark. It sounds like to me the your comic is more on the, uh, a little bit more on the lighthearted, whimsical. Yeah, I think you're right. Then don't do it. It's not going to fit you. Okay. The one I told you is going to be good. And the other one I love, it's called Dungeon Meshi. Okay. Then Dungeon, it. Dungeon, what is it? Meshi. Uh, Dungeon Meshi, so Dungeon, and then Meshi is like M E. M E. S H I. Dungeon Meshi, okay. Yeah, so it's a premise is like you get the typical RPG uh, heroes, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's actually a kind of a satire on the tropes. Oh. Yeah. But here's like, the thing. You know what? I, I bet you I would like this. You would love it. So check this out. The main guy is, of course, the knight, da, 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 everything, right? And he, and then the, to go through, like, just like a game RPG, right? You have to yeah. go through the dungeon and then kill the monsters, right? Mm -hmm. So their whole mission is going through this dungeon and killing the monsters and saving this, uh, his sister. And in, but they're poor now. So they start to, so they start to think, well, how do we eat? What do we eat, right? So he said, so finally the hero, who is like a total like knight type, 
just the blonde blue hair uh, blue eyes uh buff good looking just big guy right and he's like you know i've always wanted to try eating the monsters here <laughs> the so the whole thing becomes like a culinary strange cuisine. You kill the monster and like, okay, let's try eating it. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, that sounds awesome. It's so I'm sweet. actually I'm I'm gonna reserve it from my library. Please do right now. It's so good. I'm actually on my my library website right now, reserving <laughs> it. It's really really funny, and then you got a high mage, of course. Come on. Typical trope, right? You got the right. guy, the muscle. You got the high mage, which is an elf, an elf girl. Um, it's like D and D. Yeah. Um, like the thief, the small guy. They call it tieflings or something. I forgot. And then you get a dwarf, and the whole party now goes in, but it becomes like a yeah. So it's like Dungeons and Dragons. Exactly, an RPG and game, but it's like taking a totally strange turn of events. So yeah. So I'm de I'm definitely going to read that and I'm going to and I'll let you know mm -hmm. what I think of it. Please do. Um and I saw that your your husband sent me a message mm. about me being on your show. Oh, that would be someday. great. You're fun. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good show, I think. I think Really? I think Carl and Donna and you guys all had fun, right? Mm-hmm. You're a very um, good host. Thank you. So I try to keep these to around an hour. Okay. But we usually fail, so that's okay. <laughs> I'm curious to see what your art looks like, what this, this Wolverine ends up looking like when it's finished. Okay. Are you going to post it online? Probably. Um, but Mel does all the marketing, so... Yeah, I'll send you a picture once I'm done with it then. Because it has a schedule, I have a scheduled uh, posting. Mm -hmm. So this is, yeah, I'll just, yeah, I'll show it to you later when I'm done. But, well, thank you. Mm. What thank about yours? You. Oh, show me yours. See what I did. Mm -hmm. So I am really bad at the buttons. Here we go. Oh, you got cleaned yeah. up the dragon. Yeah, I have to rotate it so that you can see. The dragon There's looks the dragon. so interesting. Thank you. Do you, is the kitty in the panel? Um, no, yeah. It, oh my god! That's the kitty right there. Is it a white kitty? Yeah. Uh, his name is Mooney, and he was based on on my real life cat. Yeah. Who uh passed away not too long ago. Oh. It was a white kitty? Yeah, he was all white and he had I'm not done with coloring this. Uh mm. his eyes were two different colors in real life. Wow. He had one green eye and one blue eye. That's love. Good job. Yeah. He was he was such a pretty cat. So that's this the main is, character? The guy with the armpit? Yeah, hair? this is yeah, this is Victor. He's he's the reincarnation of Beowulf. And you can see oh. he has like wings on his his back too. Oh, part dragon, I see. Yeah. I hope oh. I'm not giving too much of the story away. No. So she's just the only human there. Yeah, so she's um she's she got roped into this cuz she's Mooney's owner. This but is you know amazing. What's just by reading the body language and the expression, she, even mm -hmm. though she's the one who has no power, she's the one who's most commanding. Right. Which is fascinating. And mm -hmm. I think, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't said necessarily that there's going to be a sequel, but I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I think everybody knows I want to do a sequel to this comic book. So mm -hmm. I think in the sequel, she's going to become like more of like a main character. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, issue one is not out yet. No, this is issue six. It's, um, it's a six part storyline. Okay. Um, 
like it's a six part like series mm-hmm. and then after this issue is over then I'm, i have to decide what i want to do like if, if like i mean i want to do a sequel i just need to figure out what i want the storyline to be you know what i mean yeah but you already have like this is only this is part six which means you have five issues before this isn't that crazy i've been working on this for two and a half years that's really fast oh, i'm really? so jealous yeah i'm jealous how long does it take you to usually do a comic book you know you have to know like my black and whites are not like yours no oh, really it's very intricate right but i've been managing to do one page recently one page per day oh wow yeah that's a that's, good that's a good rate right that's really really like for me i thought it's impossible but i learned like just shortcuts and stuff to work on how to just you know stylize it and make a shortcut shortcut ways and yeah man the best way to learn is just put yourself under fire yeah <laughs> Wow. How about you? For one page like that, colored, that's a lot of work. Oh, God. The coloring is what takes me the longest. I don't, sometimes, I don't know. Sometimes I debate on whether or not I like doing the coloring. Um, really? Yeah. It, I mean, it also depends. Like, I still, um, like, I do work. Like, I don't have, like, a job, but I do, like like, little work, like, on the side you know what i mean just for extra money of course yeah Yeah. of course yeah but still that also depends okay here like for example like this this is like a one sample page like it has to be this detailed you see how much background and crazy shit i have to draw yeah yeah and that's just black and white so well it's (laughs) awesome no thank you i think yours is awesome (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I love your style. Oh, you managed to do two people. Oh no, you didn't. Uh, well, I see. we have the two people, but not the two art. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Well, we're gonna have to say good night. Yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, I will talk to you and/or your husband. We will do more stuff in the future, and I'll let you know if I like this book. I just Dungeon. requested it. Yeah, I just reserved it at the yes. library. So Yes, please tell me. Okay. Very nice talking to you, Mog. Mm-hmm. Have a wonderful night. You too. Thank and you thank so you much. Thank you, everybody who, who watched. Thank you, thank you. Good night. Good night.